Agape. Thank you for joining us. It's so good to be back with you. We've been off a little while. Now we're getting back with the new year of study. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for all the many blessings that God has put up on my life and my family's life. I, I know you feel the same way about your own life, that in spite of everything, uh, God is still in the blessing business. So it's good to be reconnected with you with the word on Wednesday. Wow. And so those who are joining us, those who will join us later, I just praise God for you. I praise God for the connection that we have, that God has connected us. And I'm praying that the studies that we're going to be uh, studying and getting to will make a difference in your life, not just from the standpoint of learning more about uh, some of the Bible and, and things in the Bible, but as as well as applying things to your daily life so you can be more like Christ. You cannot be more like Christ by just talking a good game. You have to put some things into practice. And so we again praise God for you. Thank you. Uh, connect with someone else and let them know, hey, get on, get on, get on, get online with us and, and let Pastor Witt share the word with you so that you can learn more about who we are as Christians. Amen. Again, I'm just thankful that we're able to join back together again. And I'm excited about what God has in store for the next oh, several weeks. We're going to be dealing with a subject and just breaking it down piece by piece and taking our time so that you will learn and understand some things about the Bible and things that uh, we believe things we've learned and are known, but didn't know all the, the the inner workings of certain things that we say uh, in in the Bible or, or things we say as Christians. So let's pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time of sharing, time of teaching. We thank you for those who have connected with us, those who will be walking with us, and we pray that uh, we will be able to share some things that you would like others to know, to grow through. To become more like you. God, we praise you in advance for what, you, what you're getting ready to do. We thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. All right, let's get into this tonight. I just want to kind of break the ice tonight and just get us started on something. Uh, and I'm calling becoming a Christian. Becoming a Christian. That, that's, that's a topic. Uh, that we, we, we've been with all our lives, becoming a, Christ, a Christian or the beginning of the Christian life. Now, we, we all have used the term, uh, I became a Christian, or I'm going to become a Christian. I, I, and everybody has a story. Most everybody has a story. When I became a Christian, when I gave my life to Christ, I became a Christian, right there. Well, I, I want to dig deep into this, and I want to break this down. I don't want to get too too deep where it gets you frustrated, but I want to share some things to help you understand uh, what is it, what it's all about about becoming a Christian or beginning the Christian life, because most people have a very basic knowledge. I became a Christian and. And I began to learn the Bible, learn scriptures, and, and I started reading and listening and becoming active, and I started getting better at the person I am. But what is this all about, really? What is this thing about becoming a Christian or beginning the Christian life? That, that, that's what I want to, we're going to start tonight. We're just going to go through this, and, and it's a whole lot, trust me. So I, I want you to be able to kind of understand some things and Again, I, I'm going to try not to get so deep in it, but I want to I want to get you past where we are, because we all can say, "Well, I'm a Christian. I became a Christian on this Sunday. I gave my life." But it's more than that. It is a lot more than that. So I want to get into that. Well, one of the things I would ask the question, I'll let you ponder. I want you to ponder something. What does it mean to become? A Christian. What does it mean to become a Christian? 
that's how, that's that's thought provoking. Those are the things I want you to be able to write down and just ponder this week. That's one of the things. What does it mean to become a Christian? What kind of transaction is it? Oh yeah. What kind of transaction is it? What do we mean by salvation? What do we mean by salvation? Or how is a person saved? How is a person saved? What does it mean to become a Christian? What kind of transaction it is, is it? What do we mean by salvation? And how is a person saved? Those, those are four things you can ponder. Just the, one of those mm, situations. These are some of the questions involved when we study them from a standpoint of experience and life. Is salvation that something that takes place all at once, or is it a continuous process? You see, you see, you, you might see where I'm going now because this is these are things we're going to. We, I want you to be able to really kind of think about as we as we go through the steps or the process. Is salvation something that that takes place all at once? Or is it a continuous process? Okay. So we're going to begin tonight talking about the three stages of salvation. The three stages of salvation. We're only going to talk about one tonight. Because I just want to get, I want to break the ice. The three stages of salvation. Okay, the three stages of salvation, but we're going to we're just going to start on uh, the first one. Okay, now it is not our purpose. I want to make it clear: it's not our purpose here to discuss at length these three phases of matter. It's, it's not our purpose that we're going to go all so indefinite. But what what I want to do, but but my desire is, is to set out clearly that these three phases are found in the New Testament. Okay, most of what we have to say from here on will bear on one of the three aspects of the matter. Okay, because it is abundantly clear in the New Testament that He is all three: saved, being saved and going to be saved, okay? It is abundantly clear, abundantly clear in the New Testament that he is all three, or he is meaning us, you or me, he or she, is all three. We're saved, being saved, and going to be saved, okay? That, that That's a lot already, I already know it. I don't want to, I'm trying to tell you now, it, it's being, when we talk about being a Christian, it's more than just what we say those words, okay? In the New Testament, we find all three. Yes, again, here it is. Saved, being saved, and going to be saved. We will examine the use of the verb to save and the noun salvation to show that salvation is presented in three ways in the New Testament and in our experience. The use of these words to save in salvation is not the only evidence. There are other terms used in the New Testament that bear out the matter. Now, in fact, in fact, the whole presentation of the Christian life makes it clear that all three phases are fundamental in the Christian experience. Oh yeah, all three are fundamental. We're going to look at that down the road. We're going to, I'm going to show you. We will examine briefly these terms to save and salvation. We're going to look at those with a look at other facts to show that salvation is regarded in three ways in the New Testament. So here, so so this new season, we're in 2024. I'm going to break some new things off to you so that you can understand some things more thoroughly and understand some things about your Christian life. You became a Christian. Okay? All right. Let me, let me share this. Salvation, 
This is what we're going to talk about. The first, the first salvation as a definite act or transaction. Get you used to these words. Salvation as a definite act or a or transaction. So, in other words, it's it's going to. Where I'm going to show you, it's an act or a transaction. Okay. In, in in the first place, these terms denote a definite act or transaction. That's what we're going to look at that. It is this transaction that initiates the Christian life. It makes one a Christian. All right? Now, that here, that understand, it's a transaction. Okay? We're, we're going to deal with the terms definite act or transaction. It is this transaction that initiates the Christian life. It makes one a Christian. Okay, let me share. I've got a few slides I want to share. All right, let's look at this. Luke 7.50, 7, 7th chapter, 50 verse, New Living Translation. Jesus said to the sinful woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let me say that again. Jesus said to the sinful woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now, I'm going to take you to seminary just a little bit. The verb here in Greek is what we call in the perfect tense. The perfect tense. This indicates that the same was in some sense a transaction completed. Okay? Look what he says. Let me go back here. Let's say. Remember I just said it indicates that the same was in some sense a transaction completed. Jesus said to the sinful woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So it, it's a transaction completed. Now, evidently, it refers to the forgiveness of the woman's sins spoken in verse 47. Let me, let me read it here. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love, okay? He says again, I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, okay? Again, the verb here in Greek is what we call the perfect tense. It indicates that the same was in some sense a transaction completed. That's what he says, the transaction. Look what he says, again, Jesus said to the sinful woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. A transaction completed. The verb is in the, in the Greek tense. It's called the perfect tense. Okay. Let, let me read another one for you. Jesus says concerning Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this home today. I better read that one more time. Jesus says concerning Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this home today. Luke, the 19th chapter, 9th verse. Now, let me share this. The verb here is in what we call the aorist tense. Yeah, the perfect tense, aorist tense. This indicates that salvation came to Zacchaeus as a definite event. Okay. It's in the aorist tense, which indicates that salvation came to Zacchaeus as a definite event. Let me go back and show the definite event now. Jesus says concerning Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this home today. Definite event. Salvation has come to this home. Salvation has come as a definite event. Okay? So we had the, ver the verb prior was in the perfect tense. This verb now is in the aorist tense, which indicates that salvation came to Zacchaeus as a definite event. Now, transaction and event. Okay? Let me share it. Paul says, For you are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2 and 8. Paul says, For you are saved by grace through faith. Now, this is a perfect tense again. The verb here is back in the perfect tense, denoting a transaction 
completed. Okay? Hold, look, look, here it is. Look. Paul says, For you are saved by grace through faith. That's a transaction completed. The perfect tense again, the verb is in the perfect tense, denoting a transaction completed. So, in some sense, a Christian has been saved. That's a transaction, transaction completed. Okay, so you see, we have the perfect tense, which is the transaction completed, and then we have the aorist tense. Let me go back here. The aorist tense. Jesus says concerning Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this home today. It's the error that would indicate the salvation came to Jesus, uh, Zacchaeus as a definite event. Okay? And then we had the perfect tense, denoting transaction completed. Okay? All right, let me go, let me go to a couple more before we close for tonight. Paul said, he saved us not by works of righteousness that we had done, by according to his mercy through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It should be a capital S for the Spirit, not lowercase. Now, let me share this. Here the apostle uses the eras to denote salvation as a definite act. Let me go back again. We're talking about salvation as a definite act. That's the aorist tense to denote salvation as a definite act. Paul said he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, by according to his mercy through the worship, regeneration, renewal by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Paul said he saved us, not by works. Okay, that's a definite act. That's a definite act. So, the apostle uses the errors to denote salvation as a definite act. Now, besides these uses of terms to save and salvation, there are many others that speak of the Christian having been forgiven, justified, reconciled, adopted, sanctified, and so on. It goes on and on. There is an abundant evidence in the New Testament that the Christian life begins as a definite transaction, and the transaction is an act of salvation on God's part. And that's the first, that's where we're going we're gonna to stick right there tonight. Right there. I, I want you to just kind of get a grasp of this. I'm hoping that you go back and, and look at it over again before next week, because we're going to go to step two, Okay. Okay, we're going into step two. So tonight now, remember, you go back to life, we talked about the three stages of salvation. Okay? And the first stage is salvation as a definite act or transaction. That's what we looked at tonight. A definite act or transac transaction. That's where, that's, where, that's where we started tonight. That's where we're starting tonight. Salvation as a definite act or transaction. So next week, we're going to move into this salvation as a process. Okay? So go back. I want you to go back and look at this again so you can begin to understand the, the, where we're headed because you're getting a little deeper than you, you probably have as a Christian of understanding about being saved. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. Well, not understanding it, it was a transaction or a, a definite act on God's part. Because Paul ended up saying, you know, we're saved not because of what we've done. That's a definite act. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I thank God for you. I'm excited about what God is doing. Uh, again, I didn't want to do too much tonight. I uh, just want to kind of break the ice, get you kind of focused. Definitely go back, look at what we're talking about. So you'll be ready to talk about salvation as a process, okay? Oh, God bless you. Let me tell you, thank you again for being connected with us. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your participation. I am I am just overjoyed about your love for Christ. Thank you for those who, who are, I call that our, we have two churches, the in-person and the virtual church. Those who are virtual, thank you uh, for being virtual, virtually with us. I'm with you no matter what. 
I'm your pastor. So whether you're online or in person, as long as you get in the word, I want you to get the word. I want you to make the decisions that are best for your family because there's so much stuff going on. You still got COVID. You got other things out there. And if you if you have a weak immune system or you're around family members that, that you got to be careful with, I don't blame you. You do what's best. But I want to let you know I support you. I'm with you. So don't worry about this. Stay connected. Stay connected with us. Again, thank you for what you do. You're giving because your giving is between you and God, not you and agape. It's between you and God. And I found out if you do what you you and God have connected with, what you committed to God, God is committed to you. I thank you for being placing it here with agape. All right. Hey, keep praying for those you know, stand in the gap for others. Uh, you never know the power of your prayers until you see what God is doing. And so I'm telling you, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. All right. God bless you. My wife sends her love for you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of sharing as we begin a new journey. God, we pray now that you begin to move in people's hearts and minds to want to go, become closer to you. We thank you for the opportunity to share with others the goodness of God. God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.